More than half a dozen abortion providers are headed to Houston for a hearing tomorrow. They just sued the state today. The group is seeking to temporarily block the state's pre-Roe versus Wade laws on the books. Last week, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton indicated those 1920s era statutes could be enforced. Paxton says those laws were never repealed by the Texas legislature. Texas so-called trigger law will still ban the majority of abortions, but it will not take effect for approximately two months. Some people who are longing for a family are confused about their options. It comes after Friday's Supreme Court ruling on Roe versus Wade. The law doesn't give definition for fertility treatments. And now providers are fielding questions from their patients. KXAN's Tara Rahman spoke with one who says there is no reason to panic just yet. This is egg retrieval, first transfer, second transfer. Th the needles and syringes, the medication calendar, parts of Stephanie Gilbert's IVF journey that now have a place in her new nursery. For someone who was told you're never going to have a child naturally, um, it was really unexplainable. It was amazing. But Gilbert, a host on KXAN's lifestyle show, Studio 512, isn't sure about what the overturning of Roe versus Wade could mean for her. Three of her embryos weren't viable and are still frozen. Would I, you know, be forced to actually have them transferred? Do I have to carry them? Dr. Kalen Silverberg at the Texas Fertility Center says he's been fielding questions from dozens of patients. There's been no uh, regulation ruling or anything on prohibiting our ability to discard that embryo. That embryo has a essentially 0.0% chance of survival. He says they've been consulting with attorneys for about a month and the ruling in Texas's trigger law should not affect IVF treatments. Now he says they're reaching out to policymakers to make sure they're on the same page. If God forbid we need to panic in the future, there's ample time to panic in the future. But for now, it's absolutely business as usual. And although Gilbert doesn't know what the ruling might mean for a possible child number two, she's ready to welcome number one. A joy-filled home with two parents who obviously fought as hard as they could and did whatever they could to bring them into this world. Dahira Rahman, KXAN News. Not only do those going through fertility treatments have to worry about having a child, they also have to worry about finances. A study done by LendingTree shows 80% who have had treatments say their finances were negatively impacted. 29% took on debt, 37% wanted to do more but couldn't afford the cost. Insurance can help, but less than 40% say insurance covered all or most of their expenses. In fact, people who receive donor eggs are the most likely to have all or most of their costs covered by insurance. Insurance is also more likely to cover egg freezing and fertility drugs. Lawmakers in other states want to define life as beginning at conception. If those bills were to pass, it could have major implications for infertility care. It's estimated an $8 billion industry, IVF treatments, aided in the births of over 83,000 children in 2019.